In this video, we're going to take a look at definite integrals. Now, in the previous video, we introduced integration. And what we were looking at there was integration without any limits. Now, in this video, we're taking a look at integration with limits. And what we call this is a definite integral. And we can see a few examples here where we have limits on our integral. Okay. So let's just run through a few examples here together. And on the next page, there's a couple of practice questions for you to have a go at. So let's begin with the first one here. So we're asked to evaluate 4x plus 6 from 1 to 4 with respect to x. Now the idea here works pretty much the exact same way as what we saw in the previous video. So we just integrate term by term. And then we need to substitute in the limits at the very end. So let's begin by integrating here with respect to x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my result in square brackets. Okay. And remember we just go term by term here. Add 1 to the power divided by the new power. So I've got 4x here. We get 4x squared because that's a power of 1. And then we divide by this new power here of 2. Okay. Plus 6 here. This is a constant. So when we integrate this with respect to the variable, in this case x, we get 6 lots of that variable. So we get 6x. Okay. And this is with the limits from 1 to 4. So from 1 to 4 there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simplify this here. I've got 4x squared over 2, which we can just write as 2x squared. You don't have to simplify, but I would recommend it just to make the substitution easier. So I get 2x squared plus 6x there. Okay, and this is from 1 to 4. So hopefully up to now, all nice and straightforward. Pretty much just what we did in the previous video. Now here, what I want to do is substitute these limits in. And we begin with the upper limit here. So wherever there's an x, replace that with the upper limit for now. So what I'm going to get then is if we put the upper limit in first, I get 2 lots of 4 squared. So 2 lots of 4 squared plus 6 lots of 4. Okay. So that's the upper limit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to separate the upper limit and the lower limit here by using square brackets. So now we subtract the lower limit. Remember, we subtract the lower limit. So now put this in square brackets again. This is the lower limit here. So that's 2 lots of 1 squared. 2 lots of 1 squared plus 6 lots of 1. Okay. So if we just simplify here, 2 lots of 4 squared, so 4 squared is 16. Times it by 2, I'm going to get 32 there. I get 32 uh, plus 6 lots of 4, so what's that? 24. So I get 32 plus 24 minus 2 lots of 1 squared, so that's 2 times 1, so that's 2, plus 6 lots of 1, so that's 6. Okay. Keep going here. So 32 plus 24, that would give me 56. Uh, 2 plus 6, that's 8. So 56 minus 8. And in that case, what I'm going to get then is 48. Okay, so we get 48 there for that integral. So if we integrate 4x plus 6 from 1 to 4, with respect to x, then we get 48 as our answer. Okay. So hopefully that doesn't seem too challenging. That is quite a straightforward integral um, or a quite straightforward result to integrate. Um, but the concept and the method there is what we're going to be using throughout in this video. Okay. So let's begin with the next one here. We're asked to evaluate this integral now of x squared minus 1 all squared from 1 to 2. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear the screen just so we've got enough room to have a go at question two here. So where do we begin? So let's just write this out to start with. So from one to two, we've got x squared minus one, all squared. Now here, when I've got something like this where we've got an expression squared, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand the expression. Okay, so this is just double brackets. Just expand it using file or any method that you're familiar with here. So this is the integral from 1 to 2 of x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 1 with respect to x. Okay, so let's expand these double brackets here. So what will we get? Well, from 1 to 2, I'm going to get x to the power of 4. So I'm going to get x to the power of 4. I then get x squared times minus 1, so that's minus x squared. And we get the same here, so minus 1 times x squared. We get another minus x squared. So in total, I've got minus 2x squared. So minus 2x squared. And then finally, we've got minus 1 times minus 1, giving me positive 1. So we get positive 1 there. 
and we're integrating here with respect to x. Okay. So we now just go term by term again, as we did previously. And again, the method here is pretty much what we've been doing um, throughout the previous video. All we need to do then at the very end is just substitute our limits in. So if we go term by term here, what I'm going to get then is x to the power of 5 divided by 5. So x to the power of 5 divided by 5. I've then got minus 2x squared, so add 1 to the power divided by the new power, and we get minus 2x cubed over 3. And finally, we've got this 1 here, which is a constant. Once I integrate that with respect to this variable here, x, I'm just going to get 1 lot of x, or just plus x there. Okay. I'm using square brackets here because we're integrating with limits, so and I need to use the limits here. For, that's from 1 to 2 in this case. And here now, all we do is we just substitute our limits. And remember, we begin with the upper limit here, and then we subtract the lower limit off. So let's start by substituting the upper limit in here. We're probably going to need a bit of room for this. So wherever there's an x, replace that with my upper limit here. So 2 to the power of 5, 2 to the power of 5 over 5. I then got minus, so minus 2 lots of 2 cubed over 3. And then I've got plus x here, so that's plus 2. Okay, so that's the upper limit. We now need to subtract the lower limit off. So wherever there's an x, replace that with the lower limit. So I get 1 to the power of 5 over 5, so that is just 1 fifth. Minus 2 lots of 1 cubed. So 1 cubed is just 1, so I get minus 2 over 3. So minus 2 over 3. And then we've got plus x, so that'll just be plus 1. So we need to simplify this now, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my calculator because I will definitely make a mistake if I try and do this by hand. So starting with this square bracket here on the left side here, so I've got 2 to the power of 5, so that'll be 32 over 5. So let's just do this step by step. I've got 32 over 5. 2 cubed is 8 times that by 2, I'm going to get 16. So I get minus 16 over 3. Minus 16 over 3, and then plus 2. So let me just double check that just before I evaluate this on my calculator. Um, 2, to five, 2 to the power of 5 is 32 over 5. Yep. 2 cubed is 8 times that by 2. That would give me 16. And that's over 3. Yep. So let's just put it into our calculator now. So 32 over 5 minus 16 over 3 and then plus 2. And what I get there is 46 over 15. So that's 46 over 15. Okay. And now I need to subtract this off here, so we can go straight into putting this into our calculator, but just so it makes sense, let's just put it at the end here again. Minus one fifth, minus two thirds, plus one. We are running out of room a little bit. So I'll put this into your calculator here. So one over five, minus two over three, plus one. So what I get there is eight over 15. So 46 over 15, minus eight over 15. And all I need to do now is just put this into my calculator here. So 46 over 15 minus 8 over 15, basically just doing 46 minus 8. And um, what I'm going to get here then is 38 over 15. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution to the second integral. Okay. So like you can see, there is quite a bit of work that can be involved with these. Um, so just do take care simplifying at the very end. Okay. So that's our solution to the second question. So let's just clear the screen just so we've got enough room for the very last question here at the bottom. And we're asked to evaluate the square root of x from 0 to 9 with respect to x. So this one's actually quite nice. All I need to do first here though is change this rather than it being root x. And we want to write this as a power. So remember the square root of a variable like this, this is just that variable to the power of a half. So what I'm integrating here is x to the power of a half from 0 to 9. Okay, and that's with respect to x. So remember, we add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So if I've got a power of a half here, if I add 1 to that, that's the same as 3 over 2. So a half plus 1, that would give me 3 over 2, because that's the same as 2 over 2. So 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2, and we get 3 over 2. So using square brackets here, remember, I'm going to get x to the 3 over 2. And remember, we divide by this new power. So we're dividing by 3 over 2. Okay. And this is from 0 to 9. 
And I can actually simplify this. Because we're dividing by 3 over 2, well, the 2 here we can take that on top and times it by this variable here. Okay. So what I'm actually going to get here is 2x to the 3 over 2 all over 3. Okay. These are the same thing, but I think this is just a little bit easier to put into our calculator. So from 0 to 9. Okay. So remember, we start with the upper limit here and then we subtract the lower limit. So wherever there's an x, replace that with 9. So I'm going to get two lots of 9 to the 3 over 2 all over 3. So that's the upper limit. And then the lower limit here, we're actually quite lucky because when I put 0 to the 3 over 2 in here, that's going to be 0. And then I'm going to times it by 2. So we're going to get a numerator here of 0. So the full expression will actually just be 0. Okay. So all I need to do now is just put this part here into my calculator. So if we just do that dead quick, so 9 to the power of 302 or 1.5 times that by 2, so I get 54, and then we divide that by 3, and we get 18 there. Okay, so we get 18. Like we said, the lower limit here will be 0 because 0 to the 3 over 2, 0 to the 1.5 is just 0. Okay, so the lower limit is just equal to 0, and we just get 18 there. So that's our result for the third question. Okay. So now it's your turn. So if you're feeling confident enough, have a quick go, pause the video now, and we'll take a look in a moment at what you should have got. So hopefully you've gotten okay with these two practice questions. Let's take a look now at what you should have got. Now the first one is a show that question. So we actually know what we're supposed to be getting here, but we might not necessarily know how to get there. So let's just take a look at this. So we're integrating um, x squared times 1 plus x from 0 to 1 with respect to x. Now again, similar to what we did here with this bracket here where we were squaring it, I'm just going to expand now this x squared and this 1 plus x. So if we do that underneath here, from 0 to 1, well, multiplying across here, so x squared times 1 would give me x squared. And then x squared times x would give me x cubed. Okay, so x cubed there. And this is with respect to x, so dx. So now we just go term by term here, add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So we're going to get x to the power of 3 divided by 3. And then go into this next term here, again, add 1 to the power divided by the new power. So that'll be x to the 4 all over 4 there. Okay. And our limits here are from 0 to 1. So now we substitute in our upper limit here. So Wherever there's an x, replace that with 1. So we get 1 cubed, so that's 1 over 3, plus, so that's x, so we put 1 there, so that's 1 to the 4, which is just 1 over 4. Okay, that's the upper limit. And when I substitute in the lower limit here again, we're quite fortunate in the idea that when I substitute in this lower limit here, we're going to get 0 cubed, so that's 0, 0 over 3 is just 0. Same again here, 0 to the power of 4 is 0, so it's just 0. So we're just um, subtracting 0 here, so this will just be our solution. So we just need to simplify this here. So 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4, well, let's get that over a common denominator. So that's going to be the same as 4 over 12 plus 3 over 12. And in that case, we can now add these together because we've got a common denominator, and that would give us 7 over 12 there, okay, which is exactly what we wanted to get. So 7 over 12 as required. And there we have it. So that's our solution to that question. And let's take a look at the final one here where we're integrating 3 over x squared from 3 to 6. Now again, just like we did with this question here where we had it as a square root of x, I don't want my power being in the denominator here. So writing this in index notation, this will be the same as the integral from 3 to 6 of 3x to the minus 2 with respect to x. And hopefully this makes it clear why it's so important that you are, you're confident with um, indices and those rules of indices. Okay. So now we just integrate here, add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So this is a negative power, but if we add 1 to it, we're going to get minus 1 and then we divide by that minus 1. So I'm going to get 3x to the minus 1 and then divide by minus 1. If we divide by minus 1, that's just the same as times in it by minus 1. So I can just put a minus in front here. So let's just put our limits in and simplify this here. 
So this is the same as minus 3x to the minus 1, which is actually just the same as minus 3 over x. Um, so let's just write that as well, just so we've got all the different ways we can do this. That's the same as minus 3 over x from 3 to 6. Okay. What I want to do now is just substitute our limits in. Remember, we begin with the upper limit here. So I'm going to get minus 3 over 6. And that's our upper limit done there. We can't substitute it into anything else. So minus 3 over 6 minus. So this is minus 3 over 3 now. Okay, our lower, lower limit is 3. So if we evaluate this now, what I've got here is minus 3 over 6. That's minus a half. So minus a half. Minus. And this is minus 3 over 3, which is the same as minus 1. So I've got minus a half minus minus 1. So that's the same as minus a half plus 1, which in this case is the same as 1 minus a half, giving me a half there. Okay, so positive a half. So in that case, we just write our solution here. The integral of 3 over x squared from 3 to 6 with respect to x is equal to a half. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our solution for the very last question and what we should have got there. And that brings us to the end of this video on definite integrals. In the next video, we're going to take a look at finding functions.